Hello, and thank you for joining us on Human Rights, Data, and Statistics, a conversation between the UN Human Rights Office and some of the members of our Data and Statistics community on LinkedIn Live. I'm your host, Grace Stefan, from the UN Human Rights Office. Today, we discuss building trust in data and statistics with an emphasis on leaving no one behind, the pledge of the Sustainable Development Goals. At the UN Human Rights Office, we believe that you can produce data following international human rights and statistical standards while putting people at the center. We also work with the human rights community and the statistical community to come closer together. We are here in Bern, Switzerland at the UN World Data Forum. And today I'm excited to welcome two guests who join us to bring their take on rebuilding trust in data and statistics. First, Aparna Basnyat is the UN Development Program's Research and Policy Advisor on SDG 16, which addresses peace, justice, and strong institutions. Thank you for joining us, Aparna, and welcome. Thanks very much, Grace. Also joining us, coming all the way from Peru, Luis Calle from the National Statistical Office of Peru. Welcome, Luis. Nice to meet you, Grace. Thanks for the invitation. If you want to join this conversation with a comment or a question, send them in in our comment sections with the hashtag UN Human Rights. We will post a few of your questions or comments later at the broadcast. So Aparna and Louise, right now, the trust in data and statistics seems to be seriously undermined. In many places in the world, we see alarming divides between um, experts and the ordinary individuals and between official statistics and the popular perception of reality. So restoring faith in data must be a priority for us statisticians, data scientists, and also human rights advocates. So my first question to you, Aparna, is how do you think we in the data and statistics community can rebuild trust in our statistical products? Thanks very much, Grace, and it really is a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I think the questions you raise are incredibly important and are very relevant for, for our conversation today. Um, you know, from, from what, where, where we stand uh, at UNDP, we do a lot of work around supporting a um, uh, collection of data and statistics on development issues. And we're seeing across the board uh, in many contexts, you know, as you're saying, trust in, in, in facts uh, declining, trust in uh, misinformation spreading. And I think there's a really important role that uh, uh, reliable data and statistics can, pro can provide. And what we're seeing is, you know, um, you know the principles that, w that you, we, we've been talking about, about the human rights-based approach to data, is very important principles like transparency, participation. These are fundamental to rebuilding the trust um, in, uh, in the data that's out there. So having transparent uh, methodologies on how we collect data, um, the engagement of, of different stakeholders in the production of data, and very importantly, then ultimately, that data has to be used for something, right? So how do we use that data to bring about transformational change becomes very important. And so the link between trust and then the change that we want to see in the ground, um, that really the trust is very important for that. So thanks. Thank you, Aparna. Very good points. And so, Luis, same question to you, but from a perspective on an independent national statistical office. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the maximum. Hello, everybody. So, well, in my case, I think you raise an excellent point because uh, from the national perspective, from the national statistical office, uh, I can summarize uh, your question in, in a few words. We, ne we need to rebuild the trust in data. So. And from our perspective, uh, this, I, I personally believe that we, this can achieve uh, through the adherence to certain principles that are ruling uh, the statistical world nowadays. So uh, these, these principles are common and, and, is, uh, and are developed in order to, to assure the, the statistical quality around the world. So we are talking about uh, the data coherence, transparency, accountability, uh, uh, the stakeholder participation that the partner already mentioned, and uh, uh, we need to to align the supply uh, demand from uh, from uh, we need to align the supply the, uh, align demand from the from users and and, and producers. 
and, and, and we have to promote an, an a strong dissemination process in order to, to, to bring this product to the citizens. So in that sense, uh, it should be known that uh, these this some guidance are common in several instruments. So for example, uh, the UN statistical principles, the, the, the prior group from, for governance statistics uh, handbook, and another one that, that is really important, for example, the, the human rights approach that we already developed. So it's really, really important, among others. Thank you very much, Luis. Um, so back to you, Aparna. So Aparna, the UNDP, the UN Human Rights Office, and the UN Drug Agency is working together on a joint survey on SDG 16, on Goal 16, which is on peace, justice, and strong institutions. So can you tell us why do this survey? Grace, um, I have to tell you, first of all, we're super excited about this survey. Um, we are in the point right now where we are concluding the piloting around the survey. But to your question of why are we doing this, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of um, uh, you know, challenges in terms of availability of data across the board on the SDGs, but particularly on Goal 16. And I think these three agencies that have come together to see what can be done and what tools can we provide national statistics offices and national partners to be able to collect the data, to increase data availability on SDG 16. And this tool, which is the, the SDG 16 survey, as you mentioned, um, it can help countries to collect data on at least uh, 10 of the um, SDG 16 indicators. So uh, we are at the point right now where we are concluding pilotings. We've piloted in eight countries uh, and, and the tool should be available next year. But I just wanted to say, I mean, three things around the, the SDG 16 survey instrument itself. So first is that, you know, as I said, it's one instrument that can, you can use to collect 10 different SDG 16 indicators. It has modules on access to justice, on violence, on corruption, on discrimination, on governance, you know, a lot of these areas where it's it's often a challenge to collect data or the, the tools or the methodologies haven't been available in the past. So this can help countries and national statistics offices to, to collect data on these issues. Um, the second thing that I wanted to say is around the rigorous, rigorousness of, of the approach that we've taken in developing these methodologies. It's been a two-year process uh, where we have... Um, uh, gone through a process of consultation around the questionnaires with national statistics offices and other stakeholders. We've co done cognitive testing in three countries. Um, we have uh, pilot tested in eight countries in very different contexts. So it's really been a process of putting together a very strong and robust tool that countries can use. Um, and, you know, as we talked about trust, it's gone through a very, very intense process so that there, people can trust the, 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 um, the methodologies and the questionnaires and the implementation guides that, that are being developed. And the last point is that it's a very flexible tool. So it's modular in its approach. Um, countries can adjust to where they see um, they may need to collect data on, so you can select particular modules to use. Uh, it can be contextualized in different country contexts and, and used to be able to respond to certainly the core questions that are there in the questionnaire, but per add also other questions that may be relevant to the particular country context. So um, I'm very happy to share that with you, and we, we hope that it will be available by the end of this year uh, so countries can use it. Thanks. Thank you, Aparna. A quick follow-up. You mentioned the, that you are piloting the survey. So how do you allow to follow the human rights-based approach to data in the piloting of this survey? Thanks, uh, Grace. Yeah, no, the human rights-based approach to data, I mean, the, the way we've, we've approached it uh, in the survey itself is that, one, you know, the survey is a tool. I think, as I was saying earlier, it's a tool, but the process on how you actually implement the survey becomes very important. So how do you engage stakeholders to understand uh, what we are, want to collect data around? Um, they're involved in the conversation of why it's important to collect these data and ultimately to, to use it. So I think this one, participation is very important in that that process but ultimately the participation for what right so that when the data is available it can be used for accountability purposes so if we're talking about satisfaction with pub public services if people understand why this data is being collected which pockets are being left behind for example of the population whether it's geographic areas or particular ethnic groups or 
to understand that and to then use the data to hold duty bearers accountable becomes very important. I think the second point around um, the human rights-based approach to, da to data that we've tried to apply is around, you know, uh, do no harm. So certainly around issues of uh, making sure that when we are collecting this data, um, you know, it's it's based on self-identification of groups, for example. So that's very important. So that you know, at the very least, you're doing no harm. In uh, we one of the areas where we we've Im uh, implemented the pilot is Somalia, where it can be a very difficult context. So how do we make sure that we are not putting people in more harm by the questions that we are asking? So these things that we need to take into consideration as as we as we as we implement the survey will be very important. And then the last thing I would just say is that. Um, um, the survey is very important in terms of data disaggregation. So we've really emphasized, um, you know, uh, how do we disaggregating between different groups, but also around the, um, you know, what we have a whole module on discrimination. And what we really want to see is, is certainly the discrimination module on its own, but also how it interacts with other modules. So how does discrimination impact corruption, for example, or how do, how does violence and discrimination interact with each other? So the modules certainly can be looked at on their own, but also having it as an overall one survey instrument, you get to see, you know, who is being left behind and, and, and how then we can use this data to translate it to policy making that can make a change on these areas. Thank you, Aparna. Very exciting. We look forward to uh, hearing more and finding the, uh, out the results of this survey. So, uh, Louise, a question to you. A task team uh, addressing um, discrimination and, and, and inequalities are being set up uh, at, uh, in your office at the National Statistical Office in Peru, in Peru. So, can you tell us a bit more the objective of this task team? Well, at first I would like to say thank you to the prior group to to propose in our National Statistical Office to co-chair this uh, task team about non-discrimination and equality. So in that sense, we, we are putting our efforts to, to do this job well. So in that case, uh, I think that it, uh, the main purpose of this task team is try to encourage the National Statistical Offices to, to advance and improve the implementation of statistical discrimination and try to use a, a universal standards in order to measure well this, uh, this, this issue that is raising around the world. So in that case, uh, the, we are going to consider uh, the, all, the eight dimensions of the prior group uh, handbook on governance statistics. In this case, of course, we are focusing in, the, in our, our main topic that is the non-discrimination and equality. Uh, two products are expected. So the first one is a, a questionnaire module and a way of how to implement it uh, through guidances. And the second, is, uh, the second uh, product is related with, about how to collect this kind of information using administrative data. In that sense, we encourage to another uh, statistical office that uh, are interested to be part of this job. We are, uh, they are cordially invited to, 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 to be part of this initiative. So we're expecting to um, to develop this job in, in, two, in two ways. In, the, in an internal way, from the Peruvian perspective, we are gathering a, all, a, another a public agency to be part of this a, process. For example, the Ombudsman, the, the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights, and, uh, and the other and other agencies, and uh, we expect to, to have the, pre the president of another, to another expert from, from another statistical office. And at last, uh, finally, we'd like to, to say that uh, we are expecting great uh, uh, outputs about this process. So we, to, we invite to everyone who is interested to be part of this process, and that's it. Thank you, Luis. So, uh, yeah, very important work uh, for the task team, and we l good luck to all the work that you are doing. So, if you are just joining us, welcome to Human Rights Data and Statistics. I'm your host, Grace Stefan, from the UN Human Rights Office. Um, this is a conversation on uh, LinkedIn Live. We have been discussing rebuilding trust in data and statistics with a human rights approach. So still with me are uh, Parna Basniat, uh, UNDP's research and policy advisor on SDG 16, and Luis Calle from the National Peruvian uh, Statistical Office. So now we will take a few minutes uh, for your questions and comments. So if you would like to share yours, be sure to use hashtag UN Human Rights so we can see your comments.
Um, Aparna and Louise, we do have some questions from our social media platform. So I think I'll take the first one, and this one is for uh, Louise. So Louise, why, um, why do you think it's necessary that a survey on discrimination and equality be developed? Well, I think that it's really important because in Latin American countries, uh, well, we, we, we face a lot of uh, a lot of this process. No? Discrimination was a, a, a big concern about uh, our realities. So I think that this uh, survey model it will help to, to, to try to find uh, more lights about this, uh, this situation. So in that sense, I think, I think that the statistical office has a huge responsibility to to try to put it clear and try to, to find a solution and try to, to bring this information to users and, and, and try to increase the awareness about the, the, the how it's important, why it's important to fight this, uh, against discrimination. So, of course, if you t take into, co into consideration a, a human-based perspective, of course, it's, it's, relati it's relatively obvious to, that we have to deal with. So in that sense, I think the, uh, the only way to, that we can uh, take a, uh, uh, an approach about this is only through statistics. So in that sense, uh, well, uh, we are part of this movement and we expect to, to do our job and among another statistical office that probably will uh, follow this, this, this example that we are conducting right now. Thank you, Luis. And so we also have a one question for you, Aparna, from our audience. So, uh, yeah, so how will the survey questionnaire on SDG 16 be implemented by national statistical offices or national statistical s systems, for example, like our colleague here, uh, Luis? Um, yeah, no, that's a great question, uh, Grace. I mean, I think, you know, the survey is designed so that it, it is actually implemented and owned by the national statistics systems and national uh, national counterparts. Um, I think that, you know, in, in different con countries, it'll be approached in different ways. But generally, the focal point for many of the SDG 16 reporting is the national statistics uh, office. So they will be in the lead in terms of taking forward the questionnaire. Um, they will be contextualizing it. In, in their country context, and um, you know the three agencies that are that are working on the survey are available to provide the support uh, needed to take forward the survey. Um, but ultimately, you know, the survey has to be nationally owned, and that's why it's very important and nationally owned, certainly by um, the national actors, but I think also by the communities, by uh, the people. Um, so it's important to to also make sure that there is broader ownership around the survey and the issues that the survey will are, is covering so that ultimately you are able to translate you know what's coming out of the survey into policies that uh, on the ground Thanks. okay great thank you so I think we have still time to take a few more questions so uh, Louise there's one question for you from our audience and I think you talked a little bit about this uh, in some of your responses but it would be good to to get a bit more idea on how uh, how does the data provided by the UN uh, system have been uh, helpful for you to support uh, and adopt uh, in your uh, survey practices or your statistical practices well, I think the well in, in, from the from the perspective of our statistical offices, uh, the, the data provided by UN put the line and, uh, and try to to make an stand, international standard to follow. So in that sense, uh, uh, we really appreciate the, the, the great job that is uh, conducted by the Human Rights Office and another agency that is in part of this uh, part of this process. In that sense, uh, I, I, I consider that it's really important to, to try to, to follow and try to adhere to the international guidances and try to, to produce a statistics following the international standards. So in, in, this, in, in this core, uh, well, it's, it's, it's the core of our business in, uh, from, from statistical offices. Uh, I, I personally believe that the, the United Nations are conducting a, a great job uh, considering the 2030 agenda. So uh, the idea is to, 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 to reach this 2030, to, uh, moving forward about, uh, about uh, some of the, the, the main issues that, that, that the world is facing right now. So in that sense, I think the, uh, the, everything that is related with the non-discrimination, inequalities, and some gaps that, that have to be filled uh, are really important, and, uh, and UN is, is, is making, is, is doing a, a and, and it's having a, a great.
part of this uh, and this in this topic. Thank you, Louise and Aparna. So we are reaching the end of our conversation, but I would like to give each of you uh, the chance to share your final thoughts on our topic today on rebuilding trust and data in statistics. So Aparna, you can start off, please. Thanks, uh, Grace. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of rebuilding trust in, in, in data and statistics, um, you know, the survey instruments like the SDG 16 survey can be a really important tool to rebuild that trust. I mean, the the, the, the issues and topic cover top, topics covered under SDG 16 are very important to sort of rebuilding the social contract between people and the state, right? So, and, and when we look at issues like access to services, when we look at issues like discrimination and violence, I mean, how these are, are playing out in, 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 in societies and how people can address these, these challenges um, to be able to develop the policies that really address the root causes of that, it's important to have the data and have reliable data. And that's where the role of national statistics offices becomes very important to, to rebuild that trust that we're talking about and to make sure that, that the information that we're getting are, are ones where we can make um, good decisions upon and that it's reliable information, it's trustworthy, and that will then eventually make an impact to improve people's lives. Thanks. Thank you, Aparna. And Luis, same question, your last thoughts on our topic, rebuilding trust in data and statistics. Well, I would like to finish uh, saying that it's really important to, 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 to reach a high standards and try to, to leave no one behind. So in, in that in, even this is happening in, in a statistical context. So we have a, a big statistical office that uh, are conducting great uh, 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 great processes, uh, great, sur great services and great statistical activities. And, and we have a, a less developed uh, statistical agencies that they are trying to, to follow UN recommendation and try to, to follow a UN principles. So the idea to reach the 2030 is that we have in an, a strong statistical system around the world and uh, we, I, need, I, I need to remember to all the audience that we are uh, working in this process and uh, the main goal of the Statistical Commission is to have better lives, to better statistics, to have better lives. And in that sense, uh, we encourage to all the statistical producers to, to, to put the, these efforts uh, and move forward and try to superior themselves and try to move off themselves in order to, 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 to reach excellency and try to bring the statistics for any, any person that who required and try to finally uh, use this, this statistic for its main purpose, to, to, keep, to, to keep people to take decisions. Thank you, Luis. Thank you very, very important point. So thank you, Aparna and Luis, for helping us uh, talk about how to restore faith in data and statistics and how human rights can help this. I'm sure our audience, just as I, uh, have greatly enjoyed hearing from you. And thank you for those who join us on our first LinkedIn Live event. Please share your comments and feedback online. The hashtag is Human Rights Live. Till next time, I am Grace Stefan saying goodbye and reminding you to stand up for human rights.